It's called Sex and the City, Openness, Compassion, and Empowerment in the Context of AIDS. This is our wonderful city, which looks lovely when it's from far away. Still quite lovely from a little bit lower down. Not so lovely when you go to the really crowded areas and slums. And really not so lovely when you're in the slums themselves, or as this case is, in Kamatipura. This is a in particularly famous area, or I should say infamous, but it's not very pretty, either by day or by night. These are the people who are there. They are sex uh, workers, pimps, uh, madams, um, gundas, thugs, and crime gangs. You have it. Um, these are a few uh, pictures I've taken off the internet, and they're all copyrighted, so I thank everyone who's uh, given me the permission for them. I want to go back to 1993. This uh, picture is from much earlier than that, but this is St. George Hospital, which in 1993, when I was doing a story for CNN, was the epicenter of the HIV program for our state and for our city, which was then called uh, Bombay, and I still call it Bombay. Um, St. George Hospital had a wonderful person in charge of its HIV program, Dr. Subhash Salunke, who was to then join the World Health Organization several years uh, down the road. And Dr. Salunke was one of the most compassionate early adopters of the HIV treatment program. Um, since then, India has, of course, scaled up its HIV uh, response. And I won't go into much detail, except to say that when I met Dr. Salunke for the interview that we did at that time, there was a board behind him which said there were only 108 confirmed cases from across the entire country. This was in 1993. But he told me that in Kamatipura alone, at least one out of, out of five uh, prostitutes was uh, suspected of being HIV uh, positive. But they had no real information because the surveillance was non-existent at that time. They were just uh, guessing based on a few samples. Um, HIV AIDS then and now is still called Bombay disease. We heard about migrants and from countries like Nepal, Bangladesh, uh, Bhutan, when they come to a place like India and a city like Bombay and they get infected and they go back to the hometown's uh, villages, it's called Bombay disease. And that's why Bombay is still the epicenter of India's HIV story, even though the country, of course, has now seen HIV on a scale which is quite huge. Just a few stats for you, not to really bore you with too many numbers. There are an estimated 2.4 million people living with HIV in our huge country. This is just a guesstimate based on the latest surveillance. The band is from 2 million to about 2.8. I really think the actual numbers could be much higher. But uh, what do I know? I'm not really a scientist. The prevalence, the um, actual uh, percentage of the entire country that has HIV is still very low, 0.31%. So we are still technically a low prevalence country, but don't let that fool you. HIV is actually increasing, even though the government has said that we've had 50% less cases over the past uh, 10 years. The fact is that in certain uh, populations, gay men, drug uh, um, uh, using populations, HIV is sharply on the rise. Why is that? What drives HIV? And this is not only true for our country, but this is true across the world. First of all, uh, criminalization, you know, uh, section 377, which you've all, I'm sure, heard of. If you uh, criminalize certain populations, gay men, sex uh, workers, you will drive HIV underground. Stigma, which is a no-brainer uh, if you stigmatize, if you, uh, you know, point fingers, ostracize, that is also going to push people further away. Secrecy and no physical safe uh, spaces. Where do you actually go to have sex? If you're a straight couple, uh, it is hard enough finding a place. If you're gay, it is even harder. And then you've got people like Inspector Doble, who actually shut down the few safe uh, spaces that are left. So for instance, uh, Voodoo Pub, which was one of the only gay bars, shut down. Churchgate Station is one of the few places, this is of course way back then, where you can have gay sex in the toilets. And it's not true only of Churchgate Station, but it's true of many such uh, public uh, places. And think about it, to have sex, you have to go to a loo. I mean. You know, what kind of uh, society are we? You can see the uh, spaces over there. So um, I'm trying to read my own presentation over here. Uh, and basically, 
these are some uh, headlines. Um, gay uh, cruising spots. Um, yes, this is from a blog that I found. Sex is moving from interactions physically in a person to actually going on the internet. And once again, this actually spells out which stations, which public loos are safe for gay people to go and have uh, sex in. If you actually scroll down this thing which I did, you have a blow-by-blow, blow, so to speak, um, account of what kind of sex is to be had, where, what in time of the day, and you know, uh, so on and so forth. You've got applications on your smartphones. Grinder.com. You can have this application, and you know exactly in your neighborhood, within 100 feet of you, within 1,000 feet of you, who is gay and who is searching for sex. You can actually hook up over the phone and then you know, see that uh, person physically. Um, you've got certain safe spaces on the net, like gaybombay.org, which is one of the oldest gay websites, which has actually helped the uh, community create a safer space. This is not for meeting and really hooking up, but it's for counseling, psychosocial uh, support. Now, Bollywood, you know, the world's film center, doesn't really handle gay themes uh, very well. We've got films like Dostana, which make fun of gay stereotypes. Okay, they have a slightly serious um, thing of acceptance through the comedy, but it's got a long way to go. You've got films like uh, my uh, brother, uh, Nick Hill, which talk sensitively about being gay, having uh, AIDS. But uh, once again, very few such films. This was a film that you might have seen several uh, years back. Um, basically, um, Top Stars, as the uh, filmmaker Mira Nair found out when she was trying to make short films on AIDS, nobody wants to actually touch these kinds of things. Um, Heroes Project has been working with film stars for the last 10, 15 years to be spokespersons for the cause. And I just want to show you a couple of short clips. One is called Two Flowers, which has a Bollywood theme, please. हमारे सर्कल में तो ये अनपढ़ लोअर क्लास में ज्यादा होता है ये एड या तो लोअर क्लास में होता है या अपर क्लास में होता है आप उनसे क्यों नहीं पूछते उनसे बात कीजिए उन्हीं से पूछो Most people believe that AIDS cannot happen to people like them. Yet every minute, someone in India gets infected with HIV. Inform yourself. Get to know more about AIDS. So uh, those are just two of the uh, simple examples as to how we can use film stars of a certain stature, and uh, they can become spokespersons. But. All these years that we've actually used film stars, we wondered whether they were truly impactful. Does it make sense having film stars? So we did a huge survey in the four or five states that we uh, work in, and we asked sex workers, gay men, and uh, you know people with um, HIV whether having film stars actually makes sense for them. And they said, yes, it makes sense very selectively, only certain stars for certain issues, for instance, condom uh, promotion, uh, so on and so forth. But more than film stars, what they want is doctors, nurses to be their uh, spokespersons. Because in Bombay and the whole country as a whole, HIV is so stigmatized by the healthcare sector that people who are at high risk don't really want to go and get the test. They don't want to go and get these services. And this is the hugest uh, uh, challenge we have to, uh, uh, to you know, I think, uh, fighting AIDS in our uh, country. So there are several uh, papers that have been done uh, showing that uh, you know, uh, gay men can't really access um, services because they are made uh, fun of, they are um, 
you know, poked uh, fun at, and um, several other uh, papers as well. I'm just going to skip past all of this. There was a, a very good survey done of the healthcare sector, and it found that almost half of healthcare uh, uh, providers across the country, uh, you know, uh, did not want to handle HIV cases. And this is true in our own uh, city as well. Major hospitals will not accept you if you have HIV, even now. And that's not really uh, legal, but it's still being done. One of my colleagues who has AIDS, she was in danger of having two of her uh, fingers um, uh, cut off. So she went to a very famous uh, doctor in a very famous hospital. I will not say the name. And he said, why are you uh, worried about two fingers? So what if your whole hand is cut off? And this happened just about six months ago. Similarly, there was a very famous uh, playwright, uh, Chetan uh, Datar, whose play Ek uh, Madhav Bhag has been staged. He had AIDS and he's actually passed away. He went once, he never went back for services. He said he was filled with dread because he was uh, treated like crap. So w once again, stigma drives the epidemic underground. How do you treat the healthcare sector and sensitize them and make people go to the healthcare sector? Can we have this clip, please? Put a boy a bit a key. Pair all of the channel. Inke undi. Kajalani Anishkani Alachichuntaru. Mr. Sunday. Mundu, Bidda, Aru Jungrichi Viridru, Alachinchara. HIV Rakta Brickshall Viridru, Change Gunara. Me Sanksha Maniki, we could put a boy a bit of Sanksha Maniki. Prabutu Aspatur loaned ICTC Kendranikavelli. HIV to Patu, Anni Rakta Parikshani, Wuchatanga Change Kuni. Gadbusta Kalando, a doctor La Salahan and a partistu. Bari Parivakshan alone under Chala Mukyum. Mr. Sandehua, ICTC Kendrama, ICTC Kandan Grandi, Dhiringa Velandi. So we use uh, film stars to, to try to bring the healthcare sector with the high risk uh, population together. Um, AIDS orphans, this is something that always touches uh, people's hearts. We have huge numbers of kids living with HIV, but um, they're not given access to the proper treatment, medication, short lives, uh, horribly stigmatized. What kind of city are we when we actually treat uh, kids like this? And this brings me to one of my takeaway messages for you. If there is one thing that we need to do in the city of um, tomorrow, Bombay 2.0, is sex education. We used to have a certain amount of it in our state, but it was banned because of uh, political uh, pressure. And we've been asking ourselves, you know, all these symposiums and seminars, do we really need it? Of course we do. Because if we don't have it, kids are completely um, ignorant, they're not informed, and the highest number of HIV cases in our country now, including this very city, is in the age group 15 to 24. Kids are having sex much uh, younger, and they are having sex in a very unsafe way. I'm going to skip past this to show you one tool. How can you teach kids about sex in a way that is non-controversial? There is a wonderful tool which was at Stanford uh, University called Teach AIDS, Dr. Pia Sorkar. They've actually brought it to our uh, country, and what they do is they use the images of film stars as cartoons, so in a way similar to what uh, we do at my uh, uh, Heroes uh, project, and they have modules about AIDS, which they show kids of the high school and uh, uh, college years. Uh, wonderful stuff. Um, I want to talk about my own personal story a little bit. There's a film called Bombay that was made by my brother, uh, Riyad Wadia, who some of you may have uh, heard of. He was the first openly gay filmmaker, and it was based on the poetry of Raj Rao. And I want to show you one little scene called Underground from that film, please. You belong with that. It can't be said. As in the old days, the touch of some men polluted. Today it's yours, viruses and all. But goo has its uses. Consider the ripe harvest along the railway lines opposite Tharavi, fertilized by defecating humans. And goo, strong on smell, has the power of ammunition to trigger off memories of a long forgotten lover met in an underground urinal. The underground has its own shades. In London, it's the Metro Railroad with poems on the walls. And back in Bombay, 
It's the mafia world of nightly blackmailers. But tube or dark tunnel, its fault lines are anal, harking back to painful passages of seismic prose Lakshman Gaikwad read on a train journey. Underground is where you belong. While the city buzzes overhead, ghost shit on your tongue. You undress underground and find your Garden of Eden. Eden gardens abounding in Adams and serpents. Raju, 19, office boy in Bora Bazaar. Gulab, 22, waiter at Satkar. Pandu, 50, coolie at Viti. You stand in your stall and look over the wall. One comes up. Okay. So, Riyadh was the first openly gay filmmaker in our country, and unfortunately he had AIDS, and he uh, passed away in the year 2003. And he was a flamboyant activist, but inside he was very stigmatized himself. So what kind of city are we when we have an artery of healthcare centers, we have all the technology, CIPLA, so on and so forth, if we have no heart? So I would like to leave you with one thought, that in the city of um, tomorrow, I want you to go out, meet people who are not yourselves, and reach out, because unless we tackle this, we will truly not be one of the world's great uh, cities. Thank you so much.